This is seawater. What would happen if I drank it? Can I drink it? I mean, there are like bacteria in it inside the salt. Isn't it that if I drink it, I'll get dehydrated? So what happens in my body if I were to drink this stuff? Today, guys, in this video, we're going to do an experiment to understand the concentration of salt and find out why we can't drink it. Oh, and we'll also see how to determine the concentration of bacteria present in seawater so we can know if it's safe to swim in it. Imagine you're on a boat in the middle of the sea or on a deserted island. Unfortunately, you've run out of all your drinking water supplies and you're literally dying of thirst. Would you ever drink seawater? Maybe. In a moment of desperation like this, you might even consider it, rather than not drinking anything at all, but actually, it's even worse. And instead of hydrating yourself, you'd get the opposite effect, you'd become dehydrated. This is because the water in seas and oceans contains about 3.5% dissolved salts, the most common of which is sea salt, the same one we use in our kitchens, and from a chemical standpoint, we're clearly talking about sodium chloride. You see, we actually consume salt every day to season our dishes, to add flavor and taste. But like everything else, if we consume it in large amounts, it can be harmful to us. Keep in mind that the WHO recommends never exceeding 5 grams of salt per day. So, if we were to drink a 200 milliliter glass of seawater, we would also be taking in about 7 grams of salt. That's a lot, right? Yeah, it really is because 3.5% means that in 100 milliliters, there are 3.5 grams of salt. So in 200 milliliters, that's double 7 grams. Don't believe it? Let's do this experiment. We'll take 100 grams of this water, seawater, let all the water evaporate since the salts don't evaporate. And by measuring the difference in weight, we'll actually calculate how many grams of salt are in there. So to do this, let's start by weighing a crystallizer, okay? Let's weigh the crystallizer. We're at about, let's say, 104, well, 103.95. That's our tear. Now, let's take 100 grams of seawater. No need for a lab coat, because luckily, we are certainly not doing anything dangerous or hazardous here. We just need to carefully boil some water, so... I mean... Okay, we've got exactly 100 grams of the substance. Let's carefully set it here on a hot plate. This is a specialized plate that efficiently gives off heat. We will then turn on the heat and allow all of the water to completely evaporate. Then we will meticulously weigh the crystallizer again, which we had previously weighed earlier. 104. We expect it to weigh about 107.5, right? Now, in the meantime, while the water is evaporating, we said earlier that if we were to drink 200 milliliters of water, so basically this glass here, here, inside there are about 7 grams of dissolved salts with excess salt. So it would quickly enter the bloodstream and significantly increase the concentration of salt in our blood and body fluids. Now, our body would immediately want to lower the salt concentration precisely because it's too high, so automatically it tries to reduce the salt concentration. And the body does this by diluting the body fluids. And we know that if you dilute something, you lower its concentration, right? And to dilute, we need to add good water. Where does the body get this good, let's say clean water to dilute the salty water? It takes it from the cells. So, the water would start to leave the cells until they become almost completely dehydrated. So imagine the cells slowly drying out because the water leaves by osmosis. That's why we get dehydrated. Our cells dry out and shrink due to osmosis, and as a result, we get really thirsty. Our body asks us for drinkable water, and if we don't drink potable water soon, so we're in the same situation as before, in the middle of the ocean or on a deserted island, we drink seawater and then don't drink any fresh water, the dehydration would get worse. And as a consequence, we could suffer kidney damage, mental confusion, nausea, vomiting, and in the most severe cases, coma and death. Obviously, it always depends on the amount. Maybe with 200 milliliters, nothing happens right then, at that moment. But if you keep drinking seawater, sooner or later, you could actually become completely dehydrated and die. And that's not all. Because actually, besides the presence of salt, 
Seawater shouldn't be drunk also because of all the microorganisms, especially the bacteria that live in it that live inside seawater. Now, what are these bacteria? Well, they could be fecal bacteria, meaning the ones from our poop, like Enterococci and Escherichia coli, which can actually cause gastrointestinal problems such as vomiting and diarrhea. In rarer cases, in seawater, there could even be the flesh-eating bacteria Vibrio vulnificus. Let me repeat, it's extremely rare, extremely rare, so we can stay calm. But it's interesting because infections from this bacterium are actually very dangerous. And they could cause ulcers and lesions so severe that they might lead to limb amputation or even death. I repeat, so as not to cause alarmism, it is truly an extremely rare bacterium, but it is effectively one more reason not to drink seawater. Or at least use it to dip for Zell in. This is obviously highly inadvisable. Meanwhile, the water begins to evaporate. Of course, it could happen that we accidentally drink a little seawater. However, sometimes it can happen that we ingest pathogenic bacteria and feel ill even by drinking just a little water. And this depends on how many bacteria there are, therefore on the concentration of bacteria. Okay, after, let's say, at least 20 minutes, we finally managed to reach a conclusion. Look, aside from the noise, it's amazing, you can tell that this is about three and a half grams of salt. Now we're letting it dry so we can remove the moisture that's still trapped in the clumps. But look at how much salt there is in just 100 milliliters of water. Guys, this is salt. Okay, guys, we're pretty much done frying. I'd say at this point we can try to... So let's weigh it again. If before the crystallizer weighed 104, now the crystallizer plus 3.5 grams of salt should weigh a total of 107.5. Let's check. Guys, it's actually a little bit more. 3.75. Well, obviously, maybe it's not completely dry. We should do more weigh-ins, but we're about there. 3.5 grams of salt in 100 grams of seawater. Yeah, it's a little warm, but a question that might have come up is, if I were on a deserted island and somehow managed to distill water, so I boil it and then condense the water, Without the salt, could I use that? Well, technically, yes, in the sense that you would get, but water that's completely without minerals, so it's not like drinking water. It's definitely better than drinking seawater because by boiling it, we kill it. As we said, most microorganisms, but it's without minerals, it's distilled water. The best would be to distill it and then add a little bit of seawater that you previously boiled. That way, we slightly increase the concentration of minerals and we're not just drinking distilled water but the water you add has to be boiled so we kill the bacteria. This would only be a temporary solution, and we can't drink distilled water our whole lives. Guys, thank you for sticking with me. As always, we'll see you on Geopop.